So what is one of the major prices of advocacy for autistics? Burnout. Being so wrung out from constantly having to defend ourselves, our lives, and our neurology to people who aren't willing to listen, or who even worse, tell us that we're wrong, that we don't know what we're talking about, that they are the experts, and we should just shut up and get out of the way because we're broken and we're also not real autistics. And the consequences of burnout can be extreme, all the way up to suicide. Being a self-advocate is a wonderful role and provides me fulfilling, life-changing experiences that I feel enrich me. Yet at the same time, there is an unspoken price, the stress we deal with in our everyday lives. When sometimes your advocacy doesn't accomplish what you're hoping for, or worse yet, makes you, makes you enemies that attack and bully you. So the next time you're speaking to a self-advocate and they look distracted, tired, or ready to throw something or someone out the nearest window, be kind and patient to us. You may not fully realize the price we sometimes pay as a self-advocate. I was asked to consider what my call to action to you all would be. Wow. To try and take the thoughts and feelings and emotions of what it means to take on a role as an advocate, to make it succinct and yet emotional enough to reach through the bits and pieces that separate us. So I picked up Autist Autistics Aloud and I flipped through it for inspiration and the words, they came. Five, five words. They are the remedy to you do not look autistic, to you're not like my child. Nothing about us without us. I'm ashamed to say that at first I did not extend CASDA the respect that all of you deserved. I was so accustomed to being disrespected, devalued and dismissed that I assumed it and I failed to give you my best but you won me over. How powerfully you shifted my world when you listened. You changed your reporting to reflect our concerns. You adapted your processes to better include us. You continue to ask questions and make adaptations as we collectively fumble our way towards better collaboration. Prior to the CASTA experience, I was living the cost of autism advocacy. After almost 30 years of scarring from disrespect, devaluing, and dismissal, it was so hard to find the energy and words to even show up for political opportunities to make a pause-autive impact. Because of the CAP process, I was able to see that crushing federal brush off as a temporary setback of treacherous mud or scree on that trek up the mountain. I could see it that way because instead of being an unheard voice in the wilderness, I knew, I knew that there was cross Canada, cross sectoral support for necessary change. And I knew that because of you. I knew that because the members of CASTA, you, you restored my hope. Now, though advocacy can take a toll, that cost is nothing compared to the suffering that results from a lifetime of being excluded by the majority. And by spreading the meaning that you find in our messages and allowing us to guide the conversations that are about us, you'll be motivating at least one autistic self-advocate to continue doing what they're doing. Thank you.